Welcome. Happy autumn. Lovely to see how this season's progressing. Notice the colors changing and life is changing. I watched an elk swim across the lake in front of my house about a week ago. They're moving down, swimming across a gorgeous sight. And now at nighttime, I can hear them bugling to each other across Campbell Mesa. The other day, a coyote joined in. That was a, they're doing a song. It's like, they're, you know, each an individual expression. It's a gorgeous thing as the seasons change. An amazing thing. And in this time of change, I don't know, raise your hand if you've noticed that, that in your own life or lives of people around you that, that people are going through some healing events as seasons change. You notice that that happens a lot? Yeah, and things, some things get delayed a little bit because, well, they were sick and they couldn't come in, whatever it was. But this season, as, as, as this whole physical universe goes through this change of season, it affects us in our own health. And I know that for me, if, if there's some, something I'm resisting, some consciousness I'm not wanting to embrace, some change I don't want to accept, I notice it'll start coming out in my emotions. And if I don't want to face the emotions, then it starts coming out in my health. And it seems like that if those, that unfinished business of mine, it seems like it's around the time of seasons changing where I start getting, oh, maybe I'm not quite looking at something here. Maybe I need to listen to the messengers that are happening inside my body sometimes. So it's, it's a very lovely thing, this changing of seasons. I wanted to, to do a, a brief reading. Uh, it's called, you know, I thank you for indulging me and letting me read from my own book of poetry from time to time. This one's called Puppy Dog Love of a Universe. The choice of where to focus awareness is such an act of creation. Some days, however, today's personality becomes so routine that I forget that this day-to-day, oh-so-familiar and not even worth commenting on inner vibration of being is not only creating, but unique and loved and needed in this dimension. All the while, this huge, bounding, puppy-dog love of a universe, a big brown-eyed creature is watching and listening to each one of us in every moment. Nerves a-quiver, all a-slobber as it chases our focus, our thoughts and our dreams to wherever we throw our energy. And then it joyfully retrieves it faithfully shaping our reality and proudly dropping it at our feet. I'm embarrassed to say that there are days when I've gotten angry at stumbling over the piles of dreams realized. Why I've even some days tried to kick the dog rather than experiment with a new greater expression of my own creative power. And now I get the great honor of being your choir director. <laughs> you know, Steve's doing such a great job of setting up these, the whole schedule for this community and it's lovely work that you do. And, and I think maybe I ought to be going to him and say, hey, can I just lead the singing? <laughs> And then we'll do the talk on the side. So this, this song is called In the Silence. And some of you may, may have heard it before. I kind of take it a little slow. In the silence, there is a sacred place, a secret meeting place. Love is there. In the silence where every color blends, where every rainbow ends, 
good is there in the light now you find that you have peace of mind in the silence your path is paved in gold and all your dreams unfold love is there peace is there truth is there god is there okay thank you it's lovely to be here and speaking again and i know sometimes i talk about outlandish ideas sometimes i talk about about notions that I know, challenge our thinking. And, and, and I, I find that it's useful to, to explain this, that, that when I'm challenging your thinking, I'm not challenging who you are, nor am I suggesting, oh, well, you should change your thinking. No, I'm simply saying, how about consider a new point of view, and whether or not you choose to adopt it, let that be your choice and let yourself have the freedom to embrace a new idea or not. But I know that sometimes I come up with some wacko ideas that, that darts challenging to our thinking. Often, and those of you who've heard me talk before, you know that I spend a lot of time working with folks and supporting them in their healing. And so often that, that great notion of healing comes through in, in what I have to say. And of course, if we're going to talk about healing, well, sometimes we have to talk about pain. And I know everybody so loves it when I do that. <laughs> I like this express. Very good. Very good. But sometimes these changes, and this, even this season changing. It, it is about, oh, there's a fear that I have that I'm not letting myself bring up into my consciousness so that I can experience it and either heal it or keep trying to avoid it. I mean, those are my options. And sometimes this, this fear can be simply fear of, fear of the world around me, fear of the change, fear of the people around me. Fear of what's coming, fear of the future. Oh my God, am I going to be suffering in the future? And if so, how can I mitigate that to minimize my future suffering? I, think I remember talking to a previous wife and we were in love and we were talking about, well, you know, I think it'll be better if I die first. That way you're left to do the grieving. Oh, such a gift. Thank you so much. <laughs> this month's theme in the community of CSL is fulfillment. And when Steve told me that, I thought, oh, that's not even what I was going to talk about. <laughs> and then I thought, wait a minute. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And it's a, it's a funny thing. Because I know often in my life I've looked at the whole notion of fulfillment as being the accomplishment of goals. I wanted to go to Chicago. Did I get to Chicago? Great. Come. I was in a race to get to Chicago and I came in among the top ten. Great. Okay. And so often we attach to the accomplishment of the expression of our own creativity. We attach feelings of winning or losing we attach ideas and attitudes of winning and losing. And often with that experience of winning, we have that experience of triumph. Dum -ba -dum, dum -ba -dum. And, and it's an interesting thing because I think often in our world when there's so much 
winning and losing, am I accomplishing my goals or am I failing at them, we look at the experience of triumph, the feeling of triumph, as though that's a feeling of fulfillment. But I don't think those two are the same thing. I think we often expect them to be the same thing, but I don't think they're the same thing. The experience of fulfillment, at least, yes, I can understand, we have that experience of triumph or success when we've accomplished a goal. I will acknowledge that's, that's a useful part of life. But I want to talk about the experience of fulfillment that has more to do with us as beings of spirit, us as eternal creatures in many dimensions at the same time. And in that experience of being, I know I have often thought, well, there's a place to get to as myself, and once I arrive there, then it'll be fulfilled. That there must be this place of spiritual evolution where once I cross a particular line in the cosmos, in my development, then I will have arrived. Now, I grew up in a very rigid Catholic way of thinking, which I certainly embraced, and there was that clearly that, well, into heaven, into hell, into heaven, you know, and it's an eternity question. It's going to happen forever. So there was that definite line in the sand that I had to get across if I wanted any kind of peace in my own spirit, in my own self. And I'll tell you, I had a lot of struggles in thinking I was going to make it. <laughs> the peace with being. The peace with being eternal. That's an interesting thing. I've spoken briefly about the fact that I have many years ago been ordained as a minister, a non-denominational minister in an organization called the Essene Healing Ministries. Our ministries are about supporting people in healing. It's not a denominational thing. And the Essenes had a very interesting spiritual path for this question of fulfillment. It was a very interesting thing. They said there were seven steps on this path towards spiritual fulfillment. And they said the first one was what they called peace with the body. Now when I first heard this, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is about spirit, not body. Forget it. Wrong direction. I wanted to argue the point. I started considering, well, wait a minute, but this body is how I, as an eternal being, have chosen to present myself in a way that I can relate in this dimension. Without it, you don't let me play. You know, if I show up just as a ghost, nobody, <laughs> nobody has a lot of fun with that. You know? They're amazing, by the way, ghost stories about the hotels in Flagstaff, if you're not from it. These are great stories about how many ghosts we got hanging around this place. It's fabulous. Clearly beings of spirit who are not at peace with themselves. They're still trying to occupy a dimension that doesn't really have a lot of room for them. Or not a lot of willingness to interact, shall we put it that way. Yeah. It's a very interesting thing. So this body is a manifestation of my spirit. Now that, that kind of requires me to shift a whole way of my thinking. Because I cannot go around and, and relate to it as though, well, it's just this burden that I've got to carry around and, you know, I kind of make it as easy as I can on myself until I'm done with this struggle. Peace with the body. The Essenes said that if you want peace with your body, create a relationship with the sun. Now, I know that sounds wacky, too. Create a relationship with the sun? 
Of course, it's a lovely thing to do here in Flagstaff. Great. But they, but they called this the angel of sun. And they, they identified this presence of the sun as an angel because they wanted to impress upon their children a very important idea. They wanted to impress upon their children that all in this domain is conscious. That presence we call the sun in the sky is actually a conscious being. It's a spiritual being. I don't know if, I don't know if it's, we might call it alien to the human species, but you know, very unnecessary. Does a nice job. Keeps life around. This presence of the sun. And you know, that had, a, that had a meaning for me when I first learned it. And then I started thinking about it and thinking, what's it like being that creature, that being, that eternal being, who says, I mean, I just said, I'm going to show up as Ned. You know, I'll be kind of tall and have some hair growing out of a lot of places, you know, and <clears throat> I'll show up as Ned. But this creature said, I'm going to show up as the sun. Now that means a very long life. Mm, millions of years, billions of years. What does science say? You know, we got another 2.7 billion before we figure the lights out. Long time. And it's been going at least that long. Wow. Imagine a consciousness that would say, I am willing to have a presence in a dimension for that length of time and radiate an energy that makes life possible. I can think of very few choices that any being would make that would be more powerful. What a commitment. Somebody said to me, Ned, you can hang out for 2.7 years, 2.7 billion years. I said, really? I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> don't worry, you got lots of time. You can figure that out. <laughs> But what a commitment, that being that we call the sun is conscious and has made that choice every day. I imagine time moves a little differently for the sun than it does for you and I. But none, yes, isn't that interesting too, but nonetheless, to say, I will choose a dimension and radiate my energy. so that life may be nurtured. Whoa. Now we might think that that's, you know, 93 million miles away. Am I getting that right? 93 million miles away? But imagine every cell in your body is centered around a sun that's connected to the sun. And that consciousness is within every cell of your body. Oh my God. We can talk. When would I want to talk to the angel of sun? When I have some doubt about my body. Especially if I feel my energy's flagging. Ah, wanting a little support with healing? Could I talk to the cells? Think I'm gonna use your ankle. Could I talk to the cells in my ankle? and get support in doing that in a way that helps restore those cells to their perfect design with ease, effortlessly. Why not? Oh, peace with the body. Goodness. This body is one amazing thing. It gets to be an amazing tool because through it we express our own individual talents, abilities, gifts, purposes. It is an amazing creation machine. And it's a very interesting thing because many times through life we will 
suppress certain talents. We say, oh, I know I have that ability to sing, but it's so embarrassing to stand up here and sing in front of you all. It used to feel worse than, for me, it used to be, oh, no, I can't sing. I don't sing in front of, no. I'd rather stand up there naked than sing. <laughs> Stop with the visualizations now. It was that embarrassing. It was that, there was that much fear in expressing that talent of singing. And it was the greatest fear. Before, as I was learning how to stand up and talk in front of people, there was a lot of fear there. But it wasn't anything like that experience of the fear of standing up and singing in front of you. Wow. So oftentimes, I would simply say, that ability, not this time. Maybe next time, not this time. When in fact, the reason we created this body was to express every one of our abilities and talents. And we often forget that in doing so, that touches all of creation. It's like the radiance of the sun. Expressing our own talents and abilities touches all of life. Just as all of creation benefits me and my body. There is that oneness that we so respect in religious science that is at work all the time. And we often hold back on expressing our talents and abilities because we forget that oneness. And we forget that in developing and growing and expressing those talents, we are touching all of life. It is not that, oh, well, now he's going on I don't do television, but there's a, is it American Idol? Is that the place where people sing? You know, it's not like I'm going on American Idol and doing this million dollars. Forget that. That's not the point. It's that as we pursue our own talents and abilities, that vibration, that energy, that being of who we are is allowed to express. That's the gift. It is the expression of the being that we give as we develop those talents and abilities. And yes, that fear, we can heal. Rather than what I've so often done. Ah, oh, well, you know, I feel a little uncomfortable singing in front. Can we get somebody else to sing next time? <laughs> we do that as a way of trying to push the fear away. Forgetting it was meant to heal. There was a second step that the Essenes had in their path of spiritual peace, being at peace with yourself as spirit. So the first step was peace with the body, and they connected that with the angel of the sun. The second step was peace with the mind. I was thought, why is this should have been reversed. Shouldn't have been mind first, then body? Why was it that they had peace with the body first and then peace with the mind second? Then I started working with this and I started realizing, well, a lot of where I'm not at peace is in my relationship with my body and as I allow myself to come to peace with what's happening in my body in this moment, I then recognize, ah, I can make different choices in my mind. And then I come to peace with my mind. The Essenes suggested that if you're wanting to work with peace with your mind, that the tool to use is the angel of wisdom. Ah, the angel of wisdom. A conscious presence, like the sun, pervades all that is. You could call it God's wisdom. But the point is, we all have access to it. Which we sometimes forget. Very useful. When I find myself, my mind nattering on an idea, oh no, you don't understand. It's too uncomfortable singing in front of people. Don't ever do that again. That's the moment. That's the moment to invite the angel of wisdom in. Angel of wisdom, help me see that expressing my talents 
is a benefit to all of life. Just remembering, ah, there's a resource there. I can tap into it, use it. It'll often give me useful information. Like, don't forget to practice before you get up in front of everybody. Oh, good idea. <laughs> yes. The power of the word, the power of the mind, there's our biggest challenge is to remember. Remember that great statement? In the beginning was the word. Remember the power of our words. Ah, oh, when I commit my words to an action, when I send them on a direction, can I respect them enough to give them the support they need to actually manifest? And sometimes that's simply as simple as keeping my word. Showing up on the day when I'm afraid and I'd just much rather stay in bed. Thank you very much. And actually, you notice I got this little autumnal sniffle here. I think, uh, good excuse, I'm staying home in bed today. Now, I'm not suggesting ignore your body when it's telling you it's time for healing. No, but I certainly think that's a very wise choice. But what I am saying is, if we remember the power of our word, and that it is a very in, impressive act of creation what we commit ourselves to what we say we will do it greatly eases this whole process of creation that we are in the midst of I notice that when I'm in the midst of listening to doubts or listening to perhaps other people tell me you know People should only sing in front of a group when they've been well-trained, when they have the credentials. And I can let my mind start entertaining. Maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I'm not good enough to be singing. That's the time to ask the angel of wisdom, of course, to remind me, I only respond to constructive suggestions. Very helpful. Remember, we are constantly training this mind to support the being of spirit. That's one of the great joys of having. I only respond to constructive suggestions. Can I let myself trust my body to have the capacity to heal any imbalance? Can I trust my body that it has the capacity to heal any imbalance? You know, that sounds like a lovely ideal. There's only a small problem. It comes with a price. If you will trust your body to heal any imbalance, you must abandon several significant attitudes that we traffic in day and night. You must abandon your need to blame, and you must abandon your need for self-pity. And I don't know about you, you've heard me say this before, that there are days when I just as soon blame you for my, my pain as opposed to accept the fact that I've got the job of healing it. But if you will be at peace with your body, you will accept the responsibility of trusting it. It's a being of spirit. And when you have fears, uh oh, well, there's that pain in my zorch. And it, when it happened to Aunt Tilly, you know, it got worse and worse until her zorch fell off and then she died three days later. <laughs> and they say that this is genetic. And oh my God, I carry the same gene. <laughs> my zorch is going to kill me. I know it. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. We forget. In peace with the mind, the remedy for fear, and especially this great fear that we traffic in, our fear of suffering in the future, the remedy for fear is trust. Works every time.
So just a few quick practical suggestions. Lest people accuse me of only speaking etherically all the time, <laughs> I like to have practical suggestions. If you would like to be at peace with your mind and at peace with your body, one three-week experiment that I strongly recommend is every, take every television out of your house and put it in a storage unit I'm not, you know, like you could give it to a friend, but they're not, they're not doing them any favors. Just <laughs> get it out of the house for three weeks. Television. <laughs> don't plug your computer in and then turn it, you know, don't, no, no. Don't replace it. If, you, if you're going to do that, then take your computer out of the house too. <laughs> it's a very interesting. Be conscious of what you allow to program your own mind. And the television is designed, the programming is so skillfully done. You notice how many times they just repeat the negative message. Repeat the diminishing, repeat the limited message. It's, repetition's the name of the game. You want to change a belief, a limited belief? You know, people say, oh, I tried that, you know, I tried saying I only respond to constructive suggestions, I did it for three days, but then I had another negative thought, it didn't work, obviously, so I gave it up. No, no, you got to repeat the message. Repeat the new message, there's repetitions, and your subconscious will adopt the new message, but it may take 21 repetitions. Oh, so what? So, give up the television. Three weeks. If at the end of the three weeks you want it back in your life, go get it. Buy a bigger one. Whatever. But just notice how your consciousness changes in that period of time. The power of your mind. Step two. Maybe this is even more important than step one. Please be in nature every day. Be in nature every day. Nature so absorbs emotion. Our bodies are delightfully suited to our environment. And we forget that every physical event that's happening is happening to point us back to ourselves as being of spirit. Everything in the physical realm, the candle not lighting, the pain in my anger, everything is pointing us back to a greater consciousness, a growth in our consciousness of ourselves as spirit. And if you give yourself a chance every day to be in nature, you will see your consciousness growing. Again, Three-week experiment, try for three weeks, doesn't work. Go back to sitting on the couch and watching television. Fine. And the third thing, and this is practically part of being with nature, is just to remember your breathing. You know, the Essenes said, there is an angel of air and that air is actually conscious. Oh my God. That's pretty scary because if air is conscious then maybe you can read my thoughts and oh my... I didn't want you to hear that. <laughs> but it's true. Air is conscious. Air carries energy. And if you will let yourself do some breathing exercises every day it can be simply 10 deep connected breaths where you take a full deep inhale and then a full complete exhale in a cycle of 10. Three times a day. Oh. The magic there is that you're not only taking in air, you're taking in energy and you're taking in consciousness. And as a matter of fact, we all share it. And if you're looking for a medium with which to send someone a telepathic message, 
Send it on the waves of the air as you exhale. It carries information and we can we actually all are in communion, communication with each other. That funny notion that somehow I must behave a certain way or you won't love me is based on superstition. It's based on the superstition that we all don't love each other already. Which is not quite true. The reality is we all love each other profoundly. And we're in the process of discovering that. So let the air be your ally. Three weeks again. And if it doesn't work, I'll give you a full refund. <laughs> Money back guarantee. <laughs> Fulfillment. It's a process of becoming. It's a process of us taking this powerful consciousness each of us has and allowing it to grow into that unlimited eternal being each of us is. We are in a process of becoming and all that is shares that with us. And that's what I have to say about that. <laughs>